Hello friends, it's Jessica from Three Rivers Homestead, and in this video we're going to talk about some fun fall-themed, I guess, homestead projects. Things like preserving pumpkins and dealing with the uh, seeds that are starting to dry out in the garden and how we're going to store those or can them up. Um, we're also going to show you how we are processing our homegrown loofah. So let's go ahead and get started. At this point in the garden, we're basically harvesting tomatoes, a few peppers here and there, okra. We have a lot of our dried beans that we had on the vines. And then there are squashes and things like loofah. And so let's go ahead and show you, first of all, how we are dealing with those dried beans. For the most part, the majority of the beans that we grow are eaten as like a green bean. We do a lot of long beans that are pole beans that are grown up on a trellis, and then we do a lot of bush beans. And sometimes towards the end of the growing season, I don't get out to the garden as frequently as I would like to. And these long beans that are growing on the trellises can sometimes get too mature. And when they reach that point, if I haven't harvested them in time, it's best to just leave them on the vine and let them dry out so that we can harvest these lovely um, dried beans from them. We will save some of these for seed and the rest of them we will do another big harvest here next week and then we will can these up as dried beans for things like baked bean meals throughout the winter and we will show you that when we do it. But we have been busy preserving those seeds. The bees have also been very busy in the garden enjoying these loofah flowers. These are the flowers that are put off by the loofah plant, and they are just in abundance this time of year. One of these last sources of food for the bees in the very, very messy garden. But let me show you how loofah grows. A lot of people don't realize that loofah sponges are actually a type of gourd or a squash. They grow on a vine, much like other squashes do, and we like to trellis them along our fence. And when they're immature like this, they can be eaten like a zucchini. So if these don't mature in time before the first frost, these little ones will be harvested and cut up and eaten much like a zucchini. But if you leave them on the plant to mature, they end up like this and they turn into a loofah gourd, which is like a sponge that you can use. Let me show you how we process these. You can see my loofah here are kind of at three stages of drying. When they're on the vine and alive, they are green. Then they'll start to yellow, and then eventually the yellow ones will kind of brown and dry out. The one that I'm peeling right now is the most dry. It's completely dry inside, but the problem with leaving your loofah on the vine for that long is that they will begin to brown on the inside too. So this is not the ideal time to harvest these. This yellow one right here that is in my hand is a great stage for harvesting loofah. The outside still peels off very easily, but the inside is nice and fresh and in a beautiful color. Now, the opposite is true, though, for saving seeds. This really brown, dry one is great for seed saving. The seeds are fully mature, already dried out on the inside, and will have a wonderful germination rate. Whereas the yellow one that I harvested the seeds inside are not necessarily fully mature yet and you might not get great germination from them. So we just bang the gourd and kind of knock as many seeds out as we can and then these will be saved for friends that want to grow some loofah or for next year's crop. So for that first group of loofah that I brought in that was primarily for seed saving. I had left a few on the vine for that purpose. Now I'm just going to get them rinsed off here and then we're going to get these prepared for processing. So what I'm going to do is soak them in a solution of hydrogen peroxide. Some people like to use a chlorine bleach. That will make the color all bright and beautiful. Um, but if you don't want to use chlorine bleach, using the hydrogen peroxide will just uh, remove any bacteria and keep them nice and fresh for storage. So once they've soaked in that hydrogen peroxide for a little bit, I just rinse it out and we're trying to get the rest of those seeds out. The ones that don't shake out really easily while they're dry can kind of cling to the inside of the loofah sponge. So just by kind of moving it around and rinsing it, we're getting the rest of those seeds out from the inside, getting these nice and cleaned and sanitized and ready to be dried. 
So we will let these fully dry. I've cut them into the perfect size to use for dish sponges. I also use them for soap making. Here's some old uh, loofah soap from a couple years ago that I made. You can see the loofah sponge was put into the soap mold. The soap was poured over it to cure and it makes a really scrubby soap that's wonderful. And I will show you this process here coming up when I get ready to do my soap making this fall. But for now, let's move on to another fun fall project here and that is processing all of the wonderful pumpkin that has been growing on our homestead. We had so many volunteer pumpkins this year that I'm going to leave some um, fresh for decorations and some of these we're going to preserve for easy pumpkin pies. Now pumpkin is one of those things you cannot safely can the puree of a pumpkin. Uh, I know that there are some people that do it that way, but I know the National Center for Food Preservation does not recommend canning puree because it gets so dense in the jar that home canning equipment can't get the internal temperature at the very center of that jar hot enough to be safely canned and ensure that it isn't going to grow botulism. So when you do can pumpkin what you usually do is chunk it and can it in water I usually raw pack it and I have a video that I will link in the description showing how I did that last year I um, did a tutorial on that for you before so I won't do it again I'll just link that in the video but if you do want to preserve puree what you can do is go ahead and roast those pumpkins like this and we can preserve them other ways we're going to take the seeds that we pulled out of the pumpkins. We're going to soak them in some water and add a little bit of salt. Soaking them for at least 12 hours before we're going to cook them and process them helps break down the hull, breaks down the phytic acid, makes them more digestible. So we're going to set these aside and deal with them the next day. We roasted our pumpkins on 350 until they are soft enough to easily be pureed. I'm flipping them over. They're very hot. I'm trying not to burn myself. I'm going to flip them over to help them cool a little faster. And then we're going to go ahead and turn these into puree. Now, like I said, I can't safely can the puree, but there are other ways that I can preserve this. One thing that I could do is uh, puree my pumpkin and then freeze it into whatever portion I like to use it for. We're typically using puree to make pumpkin muffins or pumpkin pie around here. So both of those recipes for me call for two cups of pumpkin puree. So I have before frozen them just in two cup portions and then I can thaw them whenever I want to use them. But now that I have a freeze dryer, a great thing that I can do, I did this last year with a lot of butternut squash and pumpkin, is I can puree it, pour it onto my freeze dryer trays and freeze it into a pumpkin powder. So that's what I'm gonna do this year, but I had the idea that I would like to make a dry pumpkin pie mix, including all of the other ingredients besides the pumpkin puree that go into my pumpkin pie. So I'm gonna show you how I do that. So we got our pumpkin all pureed down and I'm, I measured it in my blender. This was six cups of pumpkin puree. So I know that this will make me three pumpkin pies in the future. That's important to know before I freeze dry it because um, I need to know correct portions for a pie for when I want to get this put into containers after it's dried. So knowing that I have six cups on this tray means that I can divide this into three parts when it's done and that will give me three pies. Now I need to fill the rest of my freeze dryer and someone told me that I should try to freeze dry some homemade gummies. I showed you how I make these in the last YouTube video that I put out and these are just fruit juice, honey, and gelatin, a really healthy treat. And some people thought that it would be fun to see what they, they do when I put them in a freeze dryer. Do they turn into kind of like a crunchy, crispy candy? So I'm really excited to try that out. And then to fill the rest of my trays, I just had some overripe bananas that were going to go bad if I didn't do something with them. So we're going to make just some banana slices. And then for the rest of the freeze dryer trays, we will put in some apple slices these are just for snacks. These won't even make it into storage. My kids are going to eat these as soon as they come out of the freeze dryer. So just filling up those trays. This batch was mostly just to get that pumpkin puree dried. We're going to stick this in there. It's going to take about 24 hours for everything to dry. And then we will come back tomorrow to show you what happens. 
But for now, we need to deal with these pumpkin seeds that were soaking overnight. These were once again soaking in a salt water solution. And as I mentioned, soaking your seeds is really important to help make them digestible. It breaks down the phytic acid in them so that your body can actually absorb the nutrients in the seed. It also makes the hull of something like a pumpkin seed much softer and easier to chew, as well as kind of infuses it with some salt water. And um, we really enjoy doing this. Pumpkin seeds are great for you nutritionally. They actually are a natural dewormer, which if your children are around farm animals or any kind of animal for that matter a lot, it's important that you focus on eating foods that will deworm you every now and then just as a preventative measure. So we added a little olive oil, some salt, and some Old Bay seasoning. We're just working it around on those wet pumpkin seeds. We're going to spread it out on a parchment paper lined cookie sheet. And we're going to roast these in the oven on 350, taking some time to stir them halfway through. They take maybe 30, 40 minutes, and then they're nice and crispy and delicious. And my children loved these as a little snack before our homeschool work one day this week. They ate up the whole container, and like I said, they don't even realize that this is a little dewormer that is good for their digestive system, a nice healthy little treat. So once again, if you're going to roast pumpkin seeds this year, this fall, make sure that you soak them first or else your body is going to have a hard time absorbing the nutrients in it. Now for those freeze-dried gummy treats. I had really high hopes for this. I thought that it would maybe turn them into a candy, and it did turn them into kind of a crunchy, crispy, fruit-flavored treat, but to be honest, I think fruit gummies are just such a fun treat as it is that my children really did enjoy them more in the gummy form. So while they did like this, and they ate them, and they said, yeah, I'd eat them if you made them again, but why go to that trouble because I kind of like them more in the gummy form. So if you want to see how I made these gummies, check out my last YouTube video. I will link that one in the description for you too. It's a super easy process. So I'm glad that I tried to freeze dry them, but like I said, not something that I will probably uh, waste time and energy doing again in the future. As you can see though, it was no problem finding willing uh, people to, to eat them all up. And as I mentioned, the fruit slices that were on these trays, they weren't going to make it into storage anyways. The kids ate those up as a snack as well. Now we're going to make this pumpkin pie mix, a freeze-dried pumpkin pie mix. So as I mentioned, this was six cups of pumpkin puree. And I need two cups per pumpkin pie that I make. So I just divided the tray into three parts and I'm kind of powdering down each third of that into one pint jar. And I really kind of have to push it down there. If I wanted to dirty up my blender or my food processor, I could put it in there and blend it into a more uniform uh, powder, but I decided not to waste the time or the dishes <laughs> in doing that. Now, once we get the powder all uh, divided out, the next thing I need to add is my sugar. So my pumpkin pies call for one half cup sugar. So that's what I'm adding to each of these jars. Once again, I'm just trying to put all of the dried ingredients into the jar for a quick and easy pumpkin pie. So one half cup sugar per jar along with the two cups of the pumpkin powder. Now we're gonna add our dried spices. I'm doing two teaspoons of cinnamon per jar. Then we are going to do one half teaspoon of nutmeg and a half teaspoon of allspice and then just a half teaspoon of salt. And I'm just kind of mixing all of that together. And now whenever I wanna make a pumpkin pie, I just have to empty the contents of this jar into a bowl with two eggs and one and a half cups of whatever milk I want. I could do coconut cream or an almond milk. If you can have dairy, you could do a regular milk and it's an instant pumpkin pie filling. So that is really exciting because like I said, since you can't safely can, pumpkin puree without commercial canning equipment. This is a great way to have pumpkin pie filling shelf stable with everything except for the wet ingredients. Now, if I wanted to, I could freeze dry some eggs and powder that up and add it to it or even freeze dry milk. Everything would be powdered up and then all I'd have to do is add water. But I think this is great the way it is. The children, if they wanna make a, an easy pumpkin pie, all they have to do is add a couple eggs and some coconut milk and they'll be good to go. 
as you can see, we are just busy this fall with schoolwork. We have really just hit the books as hard as we can. We're trying to be consistent and really work through until our Thanksgiving break and get a lot done. Um, but besides that, in the fall, now that gardening and canning season is really slowing down, it's the time for me to focus on indoor kitchen work that isn't canning. So I find myself doing a lot more making things like homemade mayo that I just showed. And we're doing a lot of fun things like smoking meats outside on our green egg cooker. It's something that I wanted to do all summer because this is a new piece of equipment for us here. But I was just so busy and in over my head with garden work and canning that there wasn't the mental energy to tackle learning a new skill. But now I have the time to do that. So I'm really enjoying learning how to smoke meat on this green egg. It's been really fun. And once I feel like I have a good handle on it, I will share some recipes and some tutorials for you guys for some different smoked meals that I have been making. But now fall and winter is the time for me to really work on my baking skills and my cooking skills. Another thing I do in the fall and winter is whenever I have empty jars that have accumulated on my counter, instead of putting empty jars back into storage down in the cellar, what I do is I make my, a rule that I have to fill the jars before they go back into the cellar. This is something that I started doing probably two or three years ago. I just told myself if I have a batch of jars that I have emptied from making meals, fill them with something. If it's a quart size jar, I might make some broth or I might work on rendering some tallow or some lard that I can fill those jars with. Maybe I'll can up some meat or some dried beans, whatever it is. Don't put empty jars back down on to the shelves. If I have half pints or pints, I find myself making some jam or jelly out of some frozen fruit or whatever fruit I have in the kitchen, and then I can add that to my stash that's downstairs. So instead of me depleting my food storage, I am adding back to it whenever jars need to head back downstairs. And so this has helped me keep a large pantry that is full throughout the entire year because we are already digging into the things that we can over the summer. And if I continue to do that without refilling jars, we will not have enough food to last us um, through until the next growing season. So I feel like there's always something that I can get canned up and that is really helpful. Well, that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed a peek into some of the fun uh, projects that we're doing. I will be back with more next week. And until then, friends, I hope that you're having a wonderful beginning of fall wherever you are. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for liking my videos and commenting and subscribing. Um, we will see you next week, friends. Bye.